Oh, there's fish. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, off he goes. Oh my goodness, I like the fish. cat. Yeah, That's amazing. You. Did I pick the right spot or not? Okay, fine, you did. Hey everybody, welcome to another Koho episode. You got a bike? Yeah, and because of those branches. Well, that's why you have to stand down there. And uh, so we have more room to cast, right? Nina's complaining that we're fishing on the high bank. I do not like this spot. <laughs> too, too, I do not. Too much obstruction behind oh. us. And on the third cast, we just had a bite and she missed it. Because so. of bushes. Yeah. Well, over down there. Actually, down on that rock down there. Why? Why can't I stand here? Nope, because, because you want to be down there, further out, and then you have more room to cast. <sighs> so difficult, like... Where, where am I going to stand? Down on that rock down there. All the way down the very bottom. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So we've chosen to fish on, on the, on the uh, rocky side of the run today, <laughs> instead of on the beach. On the beach, there's quite a few people behind us, as you can see. Um, but that means you have more room to cast over there. Um, but we always like to fish on the difficult side because there's less people and hopefully the fish will be more willing to bite. Um, it's mid-October so we're targeting coho salmon again. So she's starting out with the BNR soft bead today because we've been having all the success with that in sort of row um, which is pleasantly surprising. Um, much better, less messy uh, not as messy with it on your hands. You had a bite. Eh? That was a bite. Yeah. See? And uh, yeah. Yeah. I like this side. Yeah. That's why I, why I was wondering, like, why you are so high up, right? I don't know. Because so. I just don't like this spot. It's so. But it's difficult to fish. Yep. Yeah. The hardest spot no, is. Move. Oh, you have to film. Yeah. You're fine. You have lots of room. Why do you have to go all the way back here? I, you have I, to learn how to cast from that, from there, and, and But up. then, you can just feel the line goes ka on the reel, right? I don't like that. You know what I mean? Oh, 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 fish! Fish! Number one, coming up. There's a coho. <laughs> I saw that way oh, before you. I didn't see it. I was you. What is that? Coho. Did you bring net? I mean, oh. oh my goodness, I like the cat. Yeah. That's amazing. You. Did I pick the right spot or not? Okay, fine, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Five casts, two bites, and she already go in. And she was so skeptical about fishing on this side. <laughs> I watched that float buried while she hey, hasn't see? seen anything yet. You just, you just gotta learn how to cast without bring all the way back. I know, but I don't like it. That's why I don't like this spot. Yeah, but you're catching fish, so... I have no control. Jeez, come on. Fish on. Oh, you came off. Came off? Yeah. <laughs> Oof. Not really yet. The beat's too far down. Huh? The beat's too far down. Yeah. Oh, it always works out like that. Two bites right away, and then nothing. Nope. <laughs> we kind of, I think we worked through this for like at least an hour. Yeah. Um, tried everything, just switched it up to bait, to lures, and did some more beads, and uh, not a single bite. Oh, there's fish! 
tips. <laughs> what the heck? And it's no, every time, wh- wait, what? It's every time you're talking to that, the that foot was down like this. Because so I was, long. I was focusing on what you were saying, <laughs> and you know, <laughs> ready to make a comment, yeah. and we just, just, we're just packing everything up and saying that we're gonna leave, and I'm watching the float, and the floats. All the way down, and she's and I'm not. Look, I'm, I'm watching she's, you. She's not reacting to. Why are you watching me? Watching I don't the float. Know. So Jeez. that's gonna make us stay for a little longer now. Yes. But obviously, the, I was gonna say, you know, the, we've been fishing through this a lot, and there's lots of people around, across from us. So this run, we know there's lots of fishing here, but they just, they it could turn on again, right? Um, they're just not biting. I just can't get out there when you're much. sitting right there. Yeah. So when they're not biting, it's either, you know, they're not there or they're just sitting there and not biting, right? So, but I think in this case, they are, they are there, they're just not. Um, it's, you know, we're in the middle of the day, so they don't usually bite as well. What do you think? you want to keep going? Just a few more casts. Just a few more casts. I just need to get into that spot again, but you're in my way with that camera right now. Oh, jeez. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a misty October coho fishing day. It's October 13th and uh, we are in the prime time of the season. Um, believe it or not, I have actually haven't landed the coho salmon in eight days. That is not acceptable. The last fish I landed was actually um, the one you saw in the last video, uh, the wild fish that I released. So <laughs> I've lost quite a few things. Um, but I've also been um, helping Ian to get into some fish, um, helping my dad into his, his first uh, hatchery coal salmon as well. So today is more of a solo outing. Um, yeah, I'm thankful just being able to come down, living so close to the river, coming down, spending a few hours and have fish readily available. So. Dave, my buddy Dave's down there right now and uh, he says it's been good so I'm kind of just walking down to the run and check it out. This kind of condition you couldn't ask for anything better. Um, the overcast, slightly drizzly, just nice. Hello. Good, I had a good sleep getting Dave's texts on the phones, getting all the fish. I'm like, ah, oh, should I get up? Maybe I'll get up. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah, yeah it's always good. <laughs> Can't go wrong this time of year. <laughs> yeah. There's one. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Is it? I can't see it. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Two. Well, that's a big, big fish. Actually. 
second fish, wild. What is it, like seven? Okay. Yeah, off he goes. Oh, it came off. Oh, it came off again. <laughs> oh, it came off again. How to land them when they're down there like that? <laughs> oh, don't say that yet. He hurt you. <laughs> Is it? Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> yeah! 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 We got nets over here! Closing, eh? Right closing. Gotta get a lot of that current. Hatch, 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 right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just in case, right? That's a big one. That was a pretty good day. Uh, fish. In total, I fished for, for about two hours and uh, the fishing was very, very consistent in the first hour, just what I had expected for mid-October. Um, in total, I had probably about 12 hookups and uh, managed to land quite a few and kept three hatchery coho salmon. Yeah, very, very happy with that result. Um, it's been a great season so far. We've seen so many fish throughout the entire river and also bigger fish and lots of wild fish as well besides hatchery fish. So that's really great to see. Um, yeah, very, very happy. Oh, well, another day we're trying another spot. Oh, there's quite a few guys up here. Oh, geez, there's no one here though. Um, gonna change our strategy a little bit today. So Nina's gonna float fish with the soft bead and I purposely only brought a spinning rod for myself. So we'll cover the water by using two different methods and see which one will do better. Not so much the, it's not so much a bead versus spoon, but more just, um, you know, in case one doesn't work, what the other one would, and then we'll both can get the fish. We're starting late again, it's about 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, drop of the kids, got everything ready. So we have a few hours, hoping for that late morning, by which often happens for cold salmon. Let's do it. Who's that? What? Bite. Pretty shallow. No. Out there? No way. No, I, I saw that. It's every time I look yeah, away. I know. Saw that. Hi. <laughs> was that a chum? No, it was a coho. It's a coho. Coming in. Where is it? 
Come on. Come on. Come in, 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 Beautiful. Okay, well, let's take a quick photo and then... Okay? Yep. Okay. Yep. Like that. Right, I've been waiting for this for quite a few days now. So this is um, Gravlax made from cold salmon. Um, when I made this a few days ago and uh, I put up a story on Instagram, by the way, go follow my Instagram account if you haven't done so. Um, quite a few people have been asking, so what is the recipe? I did a video of this um, about 10 years ago and uh, it needs to be updated and I will do another one very, very soon, I promise. So this is just kind of like a sneak peek of Gravlax made from cold salmon. And it is absolutely delicious. You just have to um, trust me on that one. Um, it's a little weird for a Chinese guy to be talking about a Scandinavian recipe, but hey, 
my wife's Danish, so um, this is a quarter of a fish that I had um, taken off from the freezer a few days ago to make it. Um, this is a curing process in, uh, which involves um, pickle salt, brown sugar, and uh, dill weed. Uh, this is very, very flavorful. And uh, it, mixing those three ingredients together, and after three days, it is amazing. And uh, we usually like to serve it with some crackers or bread, um, thin slices of the gravlax with um, this sauce right here. This is just honey mustard um, dressing and uh, a little bit of dill wheat on the very top as well. So using my new North Island knife, the lady knife, and we're just gonna slice a little tiny piece of it like that. Okay. Goes on the. Oh, that's not enough. Let's do another one here. Goes on the cracker like that. So. And then we're gonna put a little bit of a dressing on it. Just a little bit. that check it out it is amazing mm. oh my gosh um, <laughs> you can buy this at any store um, throughout the year, but again, the best fish to use to eat is the, the ones that are freshly caught, like this cold salmon right here. Um, this particular fish um, was frozen right away um, after it was caught. So I first filleted the fish and uh, then it goes in the freezer. Well, it, they get vacuum packed. Then they go in the freezer for up to a week to 10 days um, to kill all the parasites. And then they can come out and go through this curing process and they make it. And we usually have uh, quite a few fillets um, throughout you know, the season that they go in the freezer and we save up for the entire winter time. And whenever we wanna make it, we just take it out and make, um, make them and eat them. You wanna eat, eat this uh, within a week. Um, in the fridge, you can you can try to freeze it, but um, it's not as good as eating them right away. So, yeah, it's very good. <laughs> so I'm not gonna sit here and eat this entire thing throughout this video. Um, that would just be really really mean to you all. Um, so let's talk about what we use in this video for cold salmon fishing. Um, we actually try something new. Um, rather than using bait uh, under the float, just like every other year, um, this year we started, started using these um, BNR soft beads. For many, many years now, I was told that um, to catch cold salmon, to get a really good float down, you really want to use bait. Um, for example, salmon rope. That, that's how you get them to bite um, very, very aggressively. Um, <clears throat> at the very beginning of this season, um, Nina actually forced me to go into First Custom Tackle to buy a pack of these. And, uh, you know, I kind of um, complained about it, went in and bought a pack and came out. And she started using them and she started catching more fish than me. We started out with catching Chinook Jacks. And uh, then I say, well, if we start getting cold salmon, then um, I will be a firm believer. And showing up, we started catching lots of cold salmon with these. And I just couldn't believe it. Um, in the end, um, I started catching, or well, I started carrying roll, my bait, uh, less and less uh, during each outing. And uh, in the last few times, pretty much, I have, I just, I've just been using these. Um, and they, they, they are just simply surprisingly amazing. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so these soft beats, um, they have a very funny texture. They're not so they're not your typically hard beads. Um, so these are kind of bouncy, and um, I, I think when the fish 
do grab onto it it does the you know the texture feels somewhat natural to them so they coat onto them um, a little longer than you know traditional heartbeats and uh yeah it's uh we we like i said we, we hook many many fish with these they come in many different sizes so it's uh, sizes that measured in millimeters so this is um 16 millimeters we've been using 14 and uh, they go down to 10 8 or even smaller and as big as 20 millimeter i've seen guys using 20s which seems so unnatural but they do catch fish and i've heard from um, fishermen from washington states saying that they only use 25 millimeters which to me that seems just ridiculously huge but um i i personally have had um good experiences with 14 mil 12 mil and uh with um mottled cherries and uh natural colors and uh, I'm sure colors do make a difference depending on the water clarity and the lighting. Um, so we definitely want to have a few different um, combinations um, to try out just in case one doesn't work. So yeah, I'll be doing another video uh, eventually to talk more about these as I try out um, try them out some more on other species such as winter steelhead so stay tuned for that many thanks to Tourism and Chilliwack for supporting this video once again um, for understanding appreciating and protecting our fishery resources around the Fraser Valley and uh, thank you all for watching this video if you haven't done so um, please subscribe to this channel I really appreciate your support and um, if you have any other questions regarding this fishery in the Chilliwack River um, please leave in the comment or any other questions on fishing in BC um, just ask and um, I'm always happy to answer your questions um, yeah and we have another probably another good month of cold salmon fishing left in the Fraser Valley so get out there enjoy it and until next time good luck fishing <laughs>